Hi there, we want to give you a tour about what is new in Disco 1.6 and to do that I'm importing a financial loan application process. So I'm, I'm loading the data set and Disco is automatically discovering the process as it was really performed as you know it. So uh, here we see the process map of how the process was, was actually executed in reality. Now there are quite a few things that are new in Disco 1.6 and one of the things people have been asking about a lot is um, the average case duration of the total uh, process uh, duration time. So here I can look at the case duration. I have the um, the complete history information available so I see there are some that are quite short and there are some, well one for example is taking up to 91 days. But what's the average case duration for all of these cases? Now you have the mean case duration, so the average case duration here on the right, and I can see that this is 8.6 days. Now on top of that we actually have something which um, I know many of you will really like because um, yeah, the mean or the average duration for uh, activities or for the code total case duration that can be um, misleading for processes or for data sets where you have a lot of outliers and actually the data set I'm, I'm looking at here is quite uh, such a data set where we have um, yeah, a lot of outliers so there are some cases that are taking really long like we have seen 90 days and there are many which are much shorter. So what this means is that the average duration is often not a very good indicator of what a typical um, case duration is and much better, much better measure for that is the median which is another statistical measure which is um, really like the medium value which is um, in the middle of the yeah the, there 50% of the values are lower than that value and 50% of the values are higher than that value. So it's really a typical value uh, from the middle. Now, if you look at um, the mean duration and the and the median duration for this particular data set, you see why that makes such a big difference. So the average duration here is 8.6 days, but the median for the complete case is just 22 hours. So there are these very long-running outliers like we've seen here that are draying up the average case duration quite a bit. So for these kind of data sets it's very useful to have the median and people have asked us about it and the reason why we didn't have it earlier is that to compute the median you actually need to keep all the values and that's for very large data sets not very efficient but um, yeah we have been looking into this and we have found a way to compute this efficiently also for very large data sets and so we can make it available in Disco without impacting any performance which is very important to us um, that um, you can analyze also large data sets very efficiently which is Disco really optimized for. Now the median is not just available here for the for the case duration um, in total but you also find it for example here for the activity statistics um, so here you see the different activities, how long they take on average, but also the median value and you can compare them and see whether there's actually um, a big difference here. And also, for example, if we go back to the overview statistics, um, in the variant statistics we see an overview about how long on average each of the variants takes. And also here you find now um, the median as another measure. Now, this brings me to another um, functionality that people have been asking about a lot which is to be able to sort the tables and well that for the same reason wasn't there before because if we sort uh, a table which has millions of cases that might potentially take a very long time and impact the performance of Disco which we didn't want to do um, but we also here found a way to do that efficiently without impacting the usage performance of someone um, using Disco who uh, who doesn't need that. So what you can do now is that you just click on the header. Uh, so for example here it's based on the number of cases um, but for example I can use the median duration and I want to sort what are the yeah the longest running variants and if I do that then the, the table is sorted. Let me do that for the cases. We have seen that here on top in the histo histogram overview, there's one case that is very, yeah, taking 90 days, and there are some others which are also very long running, those outliers that I was mentioning. So if I go here to the cases overview, then I can actually also sort based on the case duration. And if I do that again, I get the most 
long running case here on top and I have exactly that one that takes 91 days and what I see here is the case ID so what I can also do is just to copy that value so that works by right click in this particular cell so for any table cell you can do that and if I then copy the value I can go to the cases view and use the search field to just bring up this particular case and I can look at it and I can look at the details of the case and I can find out well why was this particular case um, taking so long. Now if we go back to the process map then actually um, we have the median as an additional performance metric available as well for the for the process map which is really nice. We have not just the frequency statistics here available in the process map but also the performance characteristics and well we have the total duration which gives an overview about really the what are the high impact areas the hot spots uh, where we can save most of the performance but yeah we have the maximum duration and the mean duration and now also medium the medium duration and this is also pos um, an, an opportunity to demonstrate again the impact that the median compared to the median uh, to the mean might potentially have so if we look at the mean duration we see, well, there are some activities that are uh, relatively long running compared, uh, well, to the other ones on average. But we also see some delays between the activities. And often that's actually the case. So you see some activities are taking a couple of minutes here, but usually it's the waiting times between the activities that's really taking long. So like here it's taking three days, right? Um, and that's typically where we can optimize much more. Uh, by reducing waiting times but if we actually look not at the mean duration but at the median duration then we see well this one for example was really driven up a lot by the outliers like we mentioned before so the median value for that is just 13 minutes and we're looking here at quite a big sample size so this is um, 5,000 cases have been performed have been passed along this particular path and well the median value for that was just 13 13 minutes. So it's actually not the biggest problem area. We can now focus with the median really on the much more significant problem areas, which we very clearly can find here in this activity, but much more around in these kind of wait and delay, um, yeah, process delays that we find in this area. Now, this brings me to another nice um, new type of functionality that wasn't available in Disco before, what you can now do is that you can check uh, in-case SLAs. So you can already check SLAs right now f based on the total case duration, but you couldn't do it based on a certain time that it takes between two activities without chopping off um, yeah, the events before and after that with, uh, with the trim filter, which some people didn't like to do because then you, you don't have the whole case context available anymore. So now it's much easier to do. You can just click on that arc and like before you can filter this path. So you add a, a follower filter where you're focusing on cases that are following that particular path. Um, well, before already you could also define um, for example, segregation of duty constraints, but now on top of that you can define an SLA based on the time between these two activities. So let's say uh, in this case uh, we have an SLA that this um, part in the process shouldn't take longer than two days. So if I want to check which of my cases are actually not in line with my with my SLA in this way, I can check well which are taking longer than two ways. And if I apply the filter, then I can now see well 14% of the complete data set is actually taking longer than um, than two days just from this part of the process that I was focusing on. This this is the time that I was actually calling up the client to ask about the loan application and until the point that I was actually yeah deciding or uh, working out the application form in that particular process. Now, what I can do now is that I go to the cases view, I look at, at a number of variants, uh, some of the example scenarios where I'm actually indeed spending so much time um, between these um, two activities. One thing that I note, that I notice here if I look at that, is that there are well, quite some of those um, cases which are ending at a specific endpoint that I wasn't expecting. 
the application is actually declined and I was thinking that I was actually just looking at the ones that were approved. So if I wanted to focus in on those that are declined and that are still taking so long, well that brings me to another new type of functionality that I can showcase here in this case. So I'm, I'm going back to the frequency overview quickly and I'm bringing in a couple of more paths because I want to see more endpoints. Um, namely one of them that I saw, which is the declined endpoints. So if I zoom in a little bit, you see, well, there are a um, couple of endpoints here and declined is the one that I saw that I want to focus in on. So now I can just click on any of those dashed start or end point lines and that brings me automatic to, automatically to, to a, an endpoint filter, which um, allows me to filter for this particular end activity. So if I do that here, I can just focus in on the ones that have ended in with the activity A decline. So that was the last activity that took place. And if I do that, then I now focus on the process, which is just for those cases that take uh, more than two days between um, the, the checking with the client and actually processing the application. But then on top of that also are ending in, in this particular decline status. Okay, um, so well, what you also see is that there is some um, new design for the popover dialogues. So they're now really all um, directly as the, uh, uh, the dialogues, the export dialogues, for example, is also um, designed as a popover. So it's not a model anymore. And that's uh, really very useful because you see still the context that of the data set that you want to export and um, it's much less intrusive. So you will find these kind of uh, usability improvements throughout all Disco in a consistent way. Now, the last thing that I want to show is uh, something which is absolutely new. And um, this is what we call Control Center. And Control Center is um, a new area in Disco where you can um, optimize certain um, system requirements or system uh, properties if you want to and that's uh, you get to the control center by clicking on the disco symbol here in the upper right corner. If I do that, first of all I get an overview about which version of disco I'm using and I see the history of the changes that were made for the for the past updates, for the software updates. So if you miss some things that were new, you were in a hurry, you can always come back here and you can see well, what are what were new types of functionality and you can see whether there is something that you would find useful to explore more in detail. But uh, what I want to show actually is the system tab. So if I move here from the software to the system tab, then uh, you get an overview of a number of well um, system components that Disco is um, is running on. So the first one is just the Java Virtual Machine version that you're using. You see, you can see whether you're um, using the latest version and the right one here. Um, then the processor. So that's the CPU and you can see how fast the CPU is and uh, how good the performance is. And Disco runs the benchmark and actually lets you know um, what it thinks, uh, whether you, you have enough um, um, performance uh, for the CPU, or how yeah, how good it compares to uh, compared to what is expected or what would be recommended. The next one is that I can actually now, and this is um, available now with Disco One Point uh, Six, I can actually increase the amount of memory that is used by Disco. Now, um, previously, Disco only used one or two gigabyte of memory, and even if you had more available. Disco um, yeah, would just um, use the one or two gigabyte and well it's also important that it can run with uh, such a low amount of uh, memory because um, yeah you can actually use Disco on, on any laptop. Also very large data sets can be processed because Disco does not keep the, the data in memory but it's writing them on a very um, optimized uh, disk uh, log management system it writes them temporarily on the hard disk and um, so you don't have to worry about that but if you have very large data sets and complicated processes you can increase your performance by letting Disco use more memory and well you can optimize memory here so if you want to increase 
um, the amount of memory used by disco, you can just click this button. So I'm doing that now. So in my case, I have 8 GB available here in my laptop and it suggests that I can use and I can increase the amount from 2 GB to 6 GB. So I'm, I'm going to do that now. I apply the changes and then I have to quit disco and I have to um, start it up again to get the changed memory settings. So if I start disco again and I go back to control center to the system overview uh, it's running the benchmarks again and we will see um, that I'm now using 6 gigabyte of memory, which is nice. Okay, and um, below the memory part, um, Disco is also assessing the performance of the disk that is used to store temporary files and the workspace that you're working on uh, with this optimized um, file uh, management system that I was mentioning before. So that's the Octane layer that's specifically designed for, for Disco and optimized for handling event logs and handling large amounts of, of data uh, for event logs in a very efficient way. Now, Disco is running a benchmark on the disk performance as well, and it's assessing the reading and the writing speed, and it's giving you some feedback on, um, well, how much space you have, whether you have enough free space available to store also large data sets, you need some space available, but also how uh, the reading and writing performance is, which has an import impact on the performance for very large data sets that you're using. And, well, some of you um, have may have the problem that you're running disk in a very resource-constrained environment. Maybe you have a very small um, workspace available in, an, in a virtualized environment, and then um, well, it's not the, the default location for where Disco is storing those temporary files and your workspaces might not be ideal because maybe you don't have a lot of space available or it's very it's a very slow uh, disk in terms of performance. So you have the possibility now with Disco 1.6 to change the disk that is used um, for by Disco for these um, for the for the log management. And if I'm clicking that here. Disco is analyzing the different disks that I have in my systems. Uh, on my system, it's benchmarking them, looking at the performance, the read and the write performance, and then it's going to suggest to me and uh, giving an assessment of the disks that I have, along with a recommendation um, for which disk I should use. So in my case, it is actually recommending that I keep using the the current disk that I already am using. So. That's what I should probably do. But just to show you how it works, if I do want to change the disk, I have another um, external disk here, which is actually pretty slow, and I should, probably shouldn't use it. But uh, I show you how to change this here by clicking Use this disk. And now this goes changing um, the internal disk that is, that is used um, to store my files. And if I go back and look at it, I can see that this is now the disk that is used by Disco. Well, here you have it. And well, just uh, for the sake of completeness, what we also, also built in is uh, a benchmark, since we are benchmarking your system here now anyway, of the internet connection. And well, the internet internet is not necessary for Disco. So Disco works completely in an offline environment and you don't need in an, an internet connection or you don't need to be online with Disco uh, to use it in any way. But um, we advise um, to have Disco um, set up with an internet connection because what this allows you is that you automatically get updates pushed towards Disco and you can also submit feedback directly from the system. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this gives an overview about Disco 1.6 and we hope you like it.